want to discuss something that's become an almost everyday thing. You know, every day I kind of look for uh, people that are teaching false doctrines, people that are confused on matters, etc. And I try to uh, I try to show them what the Bible says about it. You know, and something that that is uh, that always happens, and more so recently, is that people will um, they will say, you know, when I'm when I'm contending with their doctrines, they will say, oh, you're one of those, you know, legalists. And, you know, it's about the letter, or you're one of those legalists that is all about the letter, but not the spirit. And then they, they'll say something like, the Holy Spirit guides everyone into all truth, you know. Well, if that's true, you know, if, if, you're, if the way you're uh, interpreting that verse is true, then we'd have no disagreements because the Holy Spirit is guiding us all into all truth. But if we're all get guided to something different, like if you're saying it's this thing and I'm saying it's this thing and someone else is saying it's this thing and every one of us is claiming to have the Holy Spirit, well, how is it so that the Holy Spirit would arrive at you know, a thousand different conclusions. It's not. And what it is, is that 999 of them are lying. The Holy Spirit has not taught them. They're just lying in God's name. People have been doing it from the dawn of time. Uh, God has been counseling them to stop doing it from the dawn of time but this has always been what false prophets do they will find what people want to hear and they will say it you know and so people will tell me oh well you know the Holy Spirit guides me into all truth well man then it looks like you don't have the Holy Spirit because if I try the spirits, what you're saying does not jive with what the Bible teaches. You're saying something else. That's a different spirit. There's only one spirit. And people have arrived at this conclusion that I am being uh, holier than thou because I'm not obeying the way that their spirit teaches them to analyze and understand the verse even if it's a lie like God's spirit you know teaches them a lie in their mind but um and I'm being legalist no you know what's funny is those people almost 10 times out of 10 and I mean it's not funny in the sense that you know uh ha ha man I really love that they're like this no it's funny in the sense that it's always a hypocrite you know this these people almost 10 times out of 10 would give you some kind of law they'd say oh you need to keep the law oh you need to you need to whatever be circumcised oh you need to you know uh go to church three times a week or oh you need to uh you need to uh, read your Bible three times a day or you're not right with God or whatever. Almost all of them will have something that they do that they feel makes them righteous. And then anyone that's not doing it, you know, is obviously not as righteous as them. And so they'll always be legalists. But the thing about legalism in the Bible, legalism is obeying the letter of the law. Okay, I don't do I'm going to I'm going to keep this law because that's the law. That's obeying the letter of the law. 
So when he when he says, you know, not in the letter, but in the spirit, you still obey the same dang law. You know, do you, do you not understand that? You're still obeying the same law, only now you're obeying the spirit of the law. And the spirit of the law, the reason the law is written, is as a guide to show you how to love God and how to love your neighbor, okay? And if you obey the spirit of the law, you still keep the law. You still keep that law. But Paul's saying it's not about the law for law's sake. It's about the law is about loving God and loving your neighbor. That's what the law is about. You know, the whole law is encompassed briefly in that point. That's the spirit of the law. But if you keep the spirit of the law, then you also keep the letter of the law. But if you keep the letter of the law, you don't keep the spirit of the law. You understand? If you're out there doing the law for the law's sake to show that you're righteous, well, you're doing it for selfish means. You're doing it because you want to show that you're righteous so that you can, you know, in your mind, feel better about yourself or in your mind get some some reward or whatever. Which oftentimes you're seeking in a worldly reward and it does you no good. You know, but as a, as a Christian, as a person that's trying to obey the spirit of the law, that's trying to love the Lord and love our neighbor, then we're setting our eyes on God. It means we have, an, we have a reward. We're not looking for uh, outward approval or whatever. And that's the spirit of the law. So these people that will sit there and call you a legalist, you need to understand, either way, you keep the law. Either way, you keep the law. Uh, if you're going to do right, you're keeping the law. You know, if you're going to win the prize, you're keeping the law. But the difference is, as a saved person, I can't break the law. It's impossible. Okay, my flesh can. You know, the sin that dwells in my members can, but not me. See, I'm a new man. I was bought with a price. You know, and so talking about the spirit of me, my born again spirit, I can't break the law. It's impossible. But I can, you know, I do need to learn to keep my members in subjection. You know, to try to keep my flesh in check. Not because, you know, I want people to look at me and, and oogle and say, ooh, ah, not because I'm trying to keep the letter of the law, but I keep my members in check because I'm trying to, you know, what's the best way to say it? Because I'm trying to, uh, you know, because I put my trust in the Lord, I'm, I'm trying to do what is expedient. Okay, the, the Bible says not all things are lawful unto me or all things are lawful unto me. That's, I'm sorry, I misquoted that. All things are lawful unto me. In other words, all things are lawful. I can do whatever I want. But not all things are expedient. In other words, but not all things um, are good for the cause of Christ. Not all things are you know, a reward for the cause of Christ. So, I operate under that mindset, is that, you know, there's no law, because if there was a law, there would be transgression. That's what the Bible says. You know, we, we learn that by Adam and Eve. You know, they had only one law, and they were in the Garden of Eden. The only law was, don't eat of that one tree, of the fruit of good and evil. That was their only law, okay? They had only one law. If they did not break that law, you know, they had eternal life. They, they would have lived forever, you know, uh, eating the tree of life. They would have lived forever. So they had, you know, this idea of eternal life, which God did not promise them that they would have eternal life. He just said, don't eat this tree. Okay, if God had said, you have eternal life and then they afterward died because they ate of the fruit 
then it would have made God a liar. But, you know, and no doubt in some way he told them, hey, you know, you're going to live forever so long as you don't eat this fruit, you know. So that's a one law. That's the one law. If you eat this fruit, you're going to die, but otherwise you'll live forever. You know, and he did tell them, you know, in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die or something to this effect. I don't remember exactly. But they had eternal life, and look at, they only had one way to break it. We have thousands of ways to break it. We have millions of ways to break it. We have temptations that Adam and Eve would have never even known existed. You know, um, but we have, you know, we have all of these, these things in us that Adam and Eve would not have even been able to know in the Garden of Eden even existed out there. They only had one law that they had to break and they broke it and they lost that eternal light. They, they lost that, you know, uh, you know, that they would be living forever had they not broken that law. So we don't have a law because our eternal life, if, if, if we could lose our eternal life, we would lose it. But the Bible says that we there's no law for us, that we don't we don't have a law because where the law is, there is transgression. You know, and we would lose our eternal life. So since there is no law, there's no way for me to break the law. There's no way for me to transgress. That is of the new man. Now the old man does what he does. Now as a saved Christian. We, you know, we are doing or we're, we are attempting to do as a saved Christian is so to the Spirit. You know, in, in all things that we do, so to the Spirit. And that's what he's talking about when he says keep the, the spirit of the law rather than the letter of the law. And uh, if you keep the spirit of the law, you usually keep the letter of the law better. For instance, you know, now this is speaking as a fool because I have nothing whereof to glory. I'm just saying this in a, in a, in a simple fact of the way that the world gauges righteousness. Okay. Um, and the way that, that people gauge righteousness, etc. So I don't believe in keeping the letter of the law or the law for the law's sake. I believe in keeping the spirit of the law to, to, you know, to have, to do all things with prayer and thanksgiving, to love the Lord and to love my neighbor, to, you know, uh, try to win souls to Christ, etc. You know, this is the spirit of the law that is, I have eternal life. I should want to give it to other people, you know, and see that other people have it. And so I am attempting to obey the spirit of the law rather than just the letter. Okay? And now you'll take somebody that believes that you have to obey the letter of the law. I need to get past this truck swerving all over the road. Somebody that believes you have to keep the letter of the law to be saved and you look at their life compared to my life. So, this again is me speaking as a fool. You know, they might go to church more than me, etc. They, you know, whatever their little uh, righteousness is. But you look when they're not in the eyes of other Christians. When they're not in people's eyes. So, here's the thing, you know, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't party. I don't have any kind of, you know, riotousness that I know of in my life. I'm content. I ain't out there, you know, uh, angry with people because they have something I don't have or, or whatever. I don't have any kind of gripes or complaints. You know, I'm fine. You know, so I'm not drinking or smoking or partying or, or you know, I've only ever been with one woman in my whole life. It's my wife. Um, I've raised, I'm raising seven kids. 
you know, I brought seven kids into the world to, to, you know, hopefully, you know, in some way, add something to the world to, to hopefully in some way add seven names, uh, that are written in heaven. So, you know, in a sense of, you know, things that, you know, if I, if I see somebody that actually needs help, I'll help them, etc., etc. But a lot of these people that preach the law, and again, I'm speaking as a fool. I don't, I don't, I don't like praising myself and that's not what I'm doing. I don't, I don't like, you know, talking of my own works, etc., etc. That's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to say is that a lot of these people that will sit there and tell me, oh, you got to keep the law to be saved. They'll be absolute drunks, absolute drunks. They'll, they'll be drinking hard alcohol like it's, like it's candy. And, uh, then they'll, they'll say, oh, well, the Bible doesn't say not to drink alcohol. Well, actually it does. You know, it says you can drink the fruit of the vine, which is juice, uh, and wine, which is juice. You know, the Bible doesn't call it, call all wine hard alcohol, but it does make the distinction that once it's given its color in the cup, once it, once it's become something that can get you drunk, that can alter your mental state, not even to look at it. So, you know, that just because they don't know the Bible, they think that, oh yeah, you know, I can just be a stinking drunk. A lot of times they will uh, forbid people to have kids. They will say, oh no, don't get married, etc. You know, don't get married, don't have kids. Uh, I've, I've found, you know, I got made fun of by a pastor because I had so many kids. You know, uh, the pastor of the church was making fun of me because I had so many kids. You know, and I was like, I was thinking, man, what's wrong with you? Like, that's, you know, you're a pastor. You're going to make fun of somebody for having so many kids? But, you know, and and that's one of the most wicked things you can do in the Bible. You know, the Lord, you know, basically curses anybody that forbids to marry or says, blessed is the paps that never gave sucks. You know, that forbids to marry or that forbids to have children or that forbids to have multiple children. You know, a lot of the, these are a lot of the things that, that is a universal in the world. And a lot of these people that call themselves, you know, that believe that you have to be saved by the law, they will be, you know, excess riotousness or will have this sort of excess righteousness in their life. You know, so that's the difference is they believe they're justified by the law and they don't keep the law in any way, shape or form. They just keep the parts that make them feel good about themselves. The, the parts that they can use to feel good about themselves and look down to other people. Whereas I don't try to keep the law at all, at all, not at all. You know, I don't, I don't sit down and think, oh, well, I need to keep this law. I need to keep this law. I literally don't focus on it at all. I don't give a second thought to it. I don't care about keeping the law. It doesn't mean anything to me. I don't try to keep the law in any odd way. Anyway, it doesn't matter to me keeping the law. What I do try to do is to put my trust on the Lord, to, to believe the Lord, to earn that eternal reward to have those rewards which are in heaven which are incorruptible to put my faith in the Lord and then let the Lord through me do that which is good that's you know that's that's my goal I don't sit down and think you know I have this sin in my life I need to get this sin out of my life I know that I cannot of myself get that sin out of my life It'd be a wasted purpose. It'd be a wasted thing to do. You know, I know that in my flesh, I'm always going to be striving for the mark and never attaining. That's, you know, that's part of being a born-again Christian is you have this mark, you know, that, you, that you're trying to, to get to 
you're trying to you know be the best that you can be to win the race to win the prize you know to to uh you know to to love the lord and to love your neighbor in the best way possible and there's you're never going to attain that there's there's never going to come a point to where you're like oh well i've done that you know i've I've been the best Christian possible. Now, maybe on your deathbed, you might look back and say, you know, hey, I did everything I could do. You know, I fought the good fight as best I could, et cetera, et cetera, like Paul did. You know, but uh, you shouldn't, you know, looking ahead at your life, be thinking, I can, uh, I can stop and relax. You know, I've, uh, I'm a good person. You know, I've I've attained the uh, the peak level of Christianity. You know, you shouldn't be able to do that. You should... Sorry about that. You shouldn't do that. So, this is the point that I'm trying to make: is that these people that will believe that you're saved by keeping the law will often, and and I'm when I say often, I mean nearly a hundred out of a hundred times nearly a million out of a million times almost every single solitary time I'm talking to these people they will you know you go and look and they are constantly partying they are constantly fornicating they are constantly sleeping with women that are not their wives in fact they're not even married they are constantly doing these things that are extremely vile you know, maybe maybe vile isn't the best word, but uh, God has a huge problem with it. God has a huge problem with drunkards. God has a huge problem with sluggards. God has a huge problem with fornicators and adulterers. And, you know, these are these are not, you know, the 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 little small, you know. Uh, I, you know, I saw somebody that needed help and I didn't stop and help them style of thing. These are like, you know, really bad, you know. But these people that believe they're justified by the law, they'll often have these things entirely entwined within their lives, you know. And I don't believe I'm justified by the law. I don't try to keep the law in any way. And yet, just because of the nature of the Lord that is in me, you know, because because I understand the doctrines and I and I try to serve the Lord, you know, as best as 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 I can, just by nature, you know, I I keep that law that they're trying to keep better than them. And and that's the point that I'm saying. It's not about I'm better than you, etc., etc. It's just about, I believe my salvation comes through Jesus Christ alone and that none of my righteousness do anything to help it. I don't believe that righteous, that, that I can, that I have any righteousness of in and of myself or of the flesh. I don't believe that, that, that there is any law for me to have righteousness. You know, the Bible says Christ is the end of the law for righteousness sake. You know, so I, I believe that's a total waste of time. To, to try to keep the law for the law's sake, to try to keep the law to, you know, to, to, to be a good person, etc., etc. I believe it's a total waste of time. I don't do it. I don't try it. It's a waste of my time. And yet, I find that I keep the law a thousand times better than the people that believe that you need to keep the law. You know, and that thousand times probably a major exaggeration. You know, because, you know, in the, in the sense of things, you know, I break the laws that these people think is not laws. For instance, you know, I, I'll often hear someone that calls themselves a, a Christian, someone that, that believes you have to have works to be saved, say something like, it's okay to look but not to touch. Well, it's all well and good in the world's eyes, but biblically, not the case. Biblically, you know, yeah, it's okay to see the person, you know, if they're there in front of your vision, your eye sees them, 
But that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about lusting at what you see. That it's okay to look but not to touch. And biblically, that's incorrect. Biblically, if you even look upon a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. Or fornication, if she's not married. But that's the point that is being made. So, either way, that's just what I kind of wanted to drill down. Is this idea of people will say you're, you're keeping the letter of the law, not the spirit of the law, when I'm defending doctrine. Defending doctrine is not being, you know, a legalist. No. Defending doctrine. You're lying to people. You're saying, you know, one of the big ones, the everyday ones, is you're saying we're not going to be here during the tribulation. You're literally doing the work of the devil. You are telling Christians not to prepare. You are telling Christians don't trim your lamps. Now the Bible gives the example of trimming your lamps, but you're telling Christians don't trim your lamps. We're not going to be here. We're not going to be here. It's going to be fine. God is going to come and he's going to just take us off. And and then he's going to there's going to be this he's going to pour out his tribulation on them. You know, they just forget that that tribulation and wrath in the Bible are two totally different things. Not worried about that. They just believe that God's going to pour out his tribulation on people and then after that he's going to pour out his wrath on people. How do you pour out tribulation on people? I'm going to pour trials on you, you know. No. You pour wrath on people. But, you know, how do you pour tribulation on people? You know. The indignation of my tribulation, you know. Uh, uh, you know, in, in full indignation and, and hatred, I'm going to put them in a trial, test them. See if they really love me or not. <laughs> Yeah, terrible, terrible. That's pouring out my tribulation without mixture, you know. I'm going to make, make life difficult to them so they'll get off the fence. Lazy Christians, you know. Or no, for them, the Christians are already gone. It's, uh, it's 144,000 Jews. Completely absurd. Completely absurd. Like, if you believe that, I mean... You're living in a different world. You're not, you're not, you're not, you don't care what the Bible has to say. But this is, that's, you know, one of the big ones that everybody does now. Is you're, you're basically telling Christians not to prepare. Tribulation is not for you. Just uh, chill. And any day now. Jesus will just come get you and you'll disappear. That's what you're telling them. It's not true. And so I will get up there and I will tell, I will say, hey, that's not true. You know, you're saying God says this, but you're lying in the Lord's name. You're telling them, you shall not surely have tribulation. You shall not surely die. You know, you're, you're literally doing the work of Satan. You're literally doing the work that the 400 false prophets of Baal did with Ahab. You're literally doing the work that the false prophets did when Ahab was like, you know, I'm going to go fight. And uh, I think, I forget what the name of the prophet was, Micaiah or something, that, that told him, hey, if you go, you're going to die. And and he's like, no, prophesy smooth things. You know, tell, tell me, say what all the other prophets are saying. You know, and he's like, oh, okay, well then, in that case... It, no, you're going to be fine. Everything will be great. And he's like, ah, oh, how many times must I adjure you not to lie to me? You know, and he's like, okay, then yeah, if you go, you're going to die. He's like, you know, I saw a God sitting on a throne in heaven and, and this, and he said, who's going to go and, you know, uh, get, get Ahab to go into this battle so that I can kill him. And then, you know, a lying spirit said, I'll go do it. And then he said, go, you know. 
And so then the lying spirit went down and deceived all Ahab's prophets. And they told Ahab, hey, you're going to be fine. Well, that's what you're doing to people nowadays. They like you for it. They like you for it. They don't like me for it. But that's what's happening. You're telling them, hey, you're not going to have tribulation. You shall not surely die. You're not even going to be here. Don't worry about it at all. Don't even think about it. It'll be fine. Whereas I'm trying to tell them, hey, you know, <laughs> hey, they are literally doing the work of Satan. They are telling you you're not going to be here when you are for sure going to be here. You know, so then they'll call me a legalist. But it's kind of like, did I give a law? No. I'm collecting, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help these people. Because they're going to be here regardless. They're going to be here regardless. But if they're prepared to be here, then they'll have an advantage. They'll have a better start. Who knows? Maybe the Lord will prepare a place for them in the wilderness where they'll wait it out. Who knows? But either way, God bless. That's my video for today, for the night, whatever it is. It's morning. Headed to work. But, uh, you know, if, it, if, you know, if you made it this far, hit a like, you know, hit something like that. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you thought. You know, uh, give me your thoughts on it. You know, and uh, if I can be edif edifying to you or you can be edifying to me, then, you know, please do or tell me what I can do to help you. Uh, either way. God bless.